It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, how do you know if you're having a heart attack? What are the signs to look for? And who's more prone to having a heart attack? Thanks for joining us here on the Sam LaSant Show. I'm filling in for my dad, Sam. I'm Janine Mazurkevich. And today we are gonna learn about heart disease and uh, you know the symptoms that come along with having a heart attack. We're with the Lehigh Valley Health Network today. And we are with Melissa Curdo and Joan Corelli. So thanks for coming on the program with us today, girls. Right, Thank thanks you. for having us. It's a topic that we all need to be aware of, our health, heart disease, heart attack. And uh, today, hopefully, we can help our viewers at home to know the signs, know the symptoms, and know when to get help if needed. So let's start off with Melissa. Melissa Curdo is the Health and Wellness Center at Hazelton Administrator. Yes. So I'll tell everyone at home about your background. Uh, so my background is actually, I've been with the, um, starting at uh, Hazelton General Hospital with the Greater Hazelton Health Alliance. Um, and now with Lehigh Valley Health Network, I've been 18 years. I started as a physical therapist. Um, and so in the hospital with acute care and really working with even the patients that had um, congestive heart failure, heart um, disease in our, in our hospital. So you have an extensive background with working with these patients yes. and heart disease. Yep. Okay, and uh, let's talk about that. Uh, Joan, tell us a little bit about your background. I'm a registered nurse. I have my degree from Penn State. I've been working in cardiac rehab and cardiac testing for 25 years now. Okay, so again, both of you have a lot of experience when it comes to dealing with patients and in the health fields. Um, so when we look at, uh, you know, care here in the Lehigh Valley um, area and through the health network, um, the health and wellness center um, and uh, your passion for uh, your patients. So talk about, educate us about heart disease. Well, um, very extensive topic, but heart disease um, is actually the number one killer of women ages 20 and over, at causing one in three deaths per year. So um, I think it's one in 21 for breast cancer, but one in three for heart disease. So we are very passionate about taking care of um, our, our heart health and our population here as well. Um, surprisingly, Luzerne County has the, is the third highest death rate in Pennsylvania for cardiovascular disease. So um, heart disease is very, there's a lot of topics in heart disease, but heart attacks are the most common one that we hear of. Mm -hmm. That's a shock to me because I would think that more men would be having heart attacks. Yeah, since uh, I think it's believed 1984, more women are dying from heart disease than men. Okay, so why is that? A lot of risk factors. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about that because uh, as you said, Luzerne County has a high rate for heart disease and heart attack, and that goes along with, I'm sure, health, and right. other things like smoking. Right, exactly. Well, and so 80% of heart disease is actually preventable okay. because it is a lot of lifestyle choices. So um, poor diet, smoking, um, fat, um, let me think what else, obesity, uh, inactivity, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, so, so really only the, the, fam the family hereditary um, component is the 20% of that's not controllable. Unfortunately, some people are just predisposed predisposed. Okay, so again, 80% of heart disease is preventable and it really that's a, a big percentage if you're listening at home, uh, maybe you smoke or you don't eat right or you know you're not taking care of yourself with some daily activity. A number one good reason why other than, you know, being in shape is to protect yourself and be healthier. Absolutely. Because I mean, we, we also factor in stroke to heart disease as well, too. Um, all of these factors are contributors to stroke. So when you're looking at heart disease, we talk about stroke as well in that. Okay. So um, in Luzerne County, as you said, third highest death rate for, uh, from cardiovascular disease in Pennsylvania. Yes. Um, what do you say to people? who, you know, we're all busy and, uh, and live stressful lives, uh, what do you say to people uh, when, when you look at the kind of lifestyle that they live? Uh, obviously, that has, has to play a, a role in this as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's where we re really, really try and educate people. And that's why coming on the show here today and um, even part of, uh, of our hospital, 
healthcare is becoming so much more about education because we do realize that so many of the disease processes are preventable. Um, and actually, heart disease is, right now is the number one um, killer for you know for most for people. But because of lifestyle um, improvements, mm -hmm. we're seeing that become number two now to cancer. Unfortunately, it's not because cancer is going any higher. It's just that we're be, through education, we're improving our health. So we, that's the message we really try and get across to people is that this is preventable, this doesn't have to happen. Okay, so education, and we're gonna get into uh, the education that you have through the Lehigh Valley Health Network a little bit later. Uh, Joan is a registered nurse. We're gonna be talking to you about your background because Joan actually had a heart attack. Um, so we're gonna learn about the signs of having a heart attack and how do you uh, know if you're having these symptoms Again, you're watching The Sam LaSanne Show here on SSP-TV. Our guests are with the Lehigh Valley Health Network. We have Melissa Curdo, who is with the Health and Wellness Center at Hazleton. She's the administrator, and Joan Corelli, who is a registered nurse. We're talking about heart disease and avoiding, again, 80% of heart disease is preventable. We're going to talk about that coming up right here on SSP-TV. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show. I'm filling in for Sam today. I'm Janine Mazurkevich, and today our topic is heart disease, uh, heart attack, and we're looking at ways that you can prevent having a heart attack. We're here with Lehigh Valley Health Network, and we're with Melissa Curto and Joan Corelli. Thank you again for coming on the program and talking about this. Uh, we said before the break that uh, heart disease is preventable. 80% of it is. And we want to look at those risk factors one more time if you're just tuning in here to SSP TV. So again, some of those risk factors include? Smoking, um, being overweight, mm -hmm. uh, inactivity, um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. That's why it's important to know your numbers. I know that if everybody's heard about that, knowing your, um, your weight, your blood pressure, um, they're, they're your basic risk factors. Okay, and when we look at those risk factors um, through the Lehigh Valley Health Network, you do education programs actually to help prevent people from getting sick. So that is really the key. If you could prevent any of these illnesses, there's things that you can do uh, as far as exercise. Right. Um, just a little bit about, yeah. So, I mean, the littlest things of exercise you can do throughout the day. What's recommended for exercise is at least 30 minutes, five days a week which sounds like a lot, but you can break that up into smaller pieces throughout the day. And just try to be as active as you can. Exercise is big, it controls some of the other risk factors also. You can lower your blood pressure with regular exercise, you can help to control your weight, you can use exercise as a way to deal with stress. So that's one of the number one things that you can do for prevention. It could be overwhelming for someone who doesn't work out or walk a lot. They're very inactive. So what are some really key things that they can do to get started um, so that they're not overwhelming themselves? Um, you could do basic things um, such as every, if, it, if during a commercial, if you're watching TV, or if you're watching TV, get up and just march in place during watching TV, during a commercial, park, you know, the, the general ones, park further away in a parking lot, take the stairs. Um, you could do three 10-minute segments a day to add up to that 30 minutes, um, but even, or six, five minutes. It, it's just staying active and um, just taking those little things. You can go on, we talked, we've talked about this, the American Heart Association. Mm -hmm. Their website has great tips for healthy eating, um, just those, those activity challenges or activity um, opportunities that you can take throughout the day. Yeah, a lot of people like to have their Fitbit on because it really does show you. You might think you, you move around so much if you go to the doctor and they say to you, so are you active? How active are you? And you might say, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty active. And then you wear your Fitbit and you're supposed to be walking 10,000 steps and you get to 2,000 at the end of the day. I was like, oh my goodness, I got to walk around. So it makes you more aware of how many steps you're taking or that you're not taking. Right. So that's a, you know, a fun way if you're looking for some tips to make exercise fun to actually move around. We're saying exercise, we don't necessarily mean that you need to be out there running a half marathon. Right. right. We mean being active. Is, motivation is important. You mm -hmm. want to find something that you like to do. If you like to garden, that can count as your exercise. 
If, um, if you like to dance, go out and dance. Just find something that you like to do so that it's easy to stick with it. It's hard to get on a treadmill in your basement and walk for 30 minutes. So you have to try to find something that you like to do. And that's to be something that over time is attainable and is part of your healthy habits of living. It's, if it's a chore, it's like, oh my God, one other thing now that I have to do. If you enjoy it, if you enjoy swimming or hiking or right. you know, those kinds of things. Uh, my mom, you mentioned watching TV and my mom will say she will, if she's watching a show during the commercials, uh, she will do an errand. She'll empty the dishwasher or she'll go up and down the steps to, you know, put the laundry away. So she'll keep herself moving even though she is watching a show. Right. She'll take the opportunity during commercial breaks to go and actually be a little bit more active. Right. So those are some tips that you can use to stay more active and to, uh, you know, use exercise uh, if you're busy to move around a little bit more. Again, the websites, you, I love that you say stick to those reputable, reputable websites. There's a lot of information out there and it can be very overwhelming to someone mm -hmm. who's just getting started. So you have a website that they can go to. The American Heart Association is probably mm -hmm. the most comprehensive website that I would recommend. Okay, so we want you to stay active and again, prevent heart attack and heart disease. Now, Joan, you are a cardiac nurse, correct? Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. Okay, I um, started out doing telemetry in the hospital um, and then moved to cardiac testing and cardiac rehab. And what have you seen over the years, experience-wise? Well, I, I do testing on patients that come in, they've had chest pain, so they're wondering if there's a problem with the heart. Um, so that can help decide one way or the other. Um, I've dealt with cardiac rehab patients, so those are patients that have had heart attacks. So they deal with the emotions and, and um, the problems with continuing, resuming their normal lifestyle after a heart attack. Okay, we've come a long way in medicine. When uh, I remember growing up and someone having a heart attack, you, you, you thought they were gonna just die. Right. Uh, and now medicine has brought us so far, again, with the education and moving along with right. the experience in, in medicine. Uh, so what exactly is a heart attack? We have this little diagram here. Um, and just explain to everyone what exactly a heart attack is. Well, on the diagram, it shows the coronary arteries, and what happens with a heart attack is when one of those coronary arteries becomes blocked, and part of that heart muscle does not get the blood supply that it needs. Okay, and is this something that you can avoid through the items that we are speaking of? Correct. Okay. 80% of the time, probably, because okay. sometimes you can be doing everything right, you can have no risk factors, and you can have a heart attack. Okay. Now, heart attacks can be caused by a blood clot, it can be a plaque that builds up in the artery over time, or it can be a spasm of the coronary artery. So if you are not having any symptoms, which we'll, we'll get to in a second, um, are, are you supposed to get any testing done um, for your heart over the years, or is that through a, a yearly physical? Well, when you go to your physician, um, you should have cholesterol levels drawn, you should have your blood pressure taken, you should have your weight. Um, calculated your BMI so that you know if you fall into those categories of high risk. All right, let's talk about those symptoms because there are many and the symptoms are different uh, for men and women and I see here on my list the symptoms are more plentiful for women. Right, a little more vague. Uh, mm -hmm. The main symptom that you hear of when somebody's having a heart attack is pressure or tightness in the chest and that's more common with men. Women usually complain of indigestion, uh, more of a burning. I'm gonna to go to my list here. Uh, women can have more trouble breathing, trouble sleeping, nausea. It can be just headaches, pain in the back between the shoulder blades, um, and sometimes just a stomach discomfort. Mm -hmm. Now when I look at this list, and maybe some of you would agree with me uh, at home, I've had some of these symptoms. Right. <laughs> and you know, it might have come from stress or, stress or as we like to say, agita. Uh, so how do you really know if this symptom uh, is something that you should be, you know, going to the doctor for? Well, if you have symptoms over time, you want to go to the doctor and let him know. Um, I think you kind of know in an emergency situation and you would want to call 911. I think sometimes the symptoms just bring on that feeling that there's something wrong and that you should seek help. Okay. So would you have all these symptoms 
together when you say over time uh, you know over a couple hours um, you know is this over a couple days you can just start to have symptoms some people can have no warning signs at all and that just start to have chest pain you can have multiple symptoms over a period of time um, when you have a heart attack it can be one of those vague symptoms or it can be a few of those things together so it is very confusing mm -hmm. when you're having these symptoms uh, the longer you wait, does that has, have anything to do with the outcome of what can happen? Well, absolutely, because if you are having a heart attack, then more of that heart muscle is damaged. Mm -hmm. So if you have a blockage in one of your coronary arteries and you can get to the hospital, they can open that up and save heart muscle. So this is, this is really a life or death decision? It is, yes. Okay, so timing is, you know, very important. If you yes. do have any of these signs, again, if you want to read through those uh, again for people at home uh, to know this, the symptoms. Okay, men usually have chest pain, especially with exertion. So if you're climbing up a flight of steps or if you're carrying something heavy and you have symptoms, that should raise a red flag. Shortness of breath, nausea, lightheadedness, and kind of cold and clammy. Women, on the other hand, their chest pain might be described as heavy or achy or an indigestion type feeling. Women can feel very tired and maybe that's their only symptom is just fatigue. Trouble sleeping, nausea, new or worse headaches, a burning feeling in the chest, pain in the back between the shoulders, pain in the chest that spreads to the jaw, neck, shoulders, ear or inside of the arm, and pain in the stomach above the belly button. So again, if you have any of those symptoms, don't wait. You should do what? Call 911? Call 911, yes. Okay, do not drive yourself to the Correct. hospital. Do not <laughs> drive yourself to the hospital. It sounds crazy to say that out loud and assume, but I mean, some people actually, you know, do think that they can do that if they're at work or they're, you know, they think that they could get there in time because um, this can happen anywhere. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to be home if you have these symptoms. Um, they'll, they'll just drive themselves to the hospital. Joan, you've experienced a heart attack, so you are a good person to be talking about this right. I was subject. An unlucky one, I feel. Um, I did not have risk factors for heart disease, um, but I did start having some symptoms. And when I went to the hospital, one of my coronary arteries was spasmed shut. Uh, they do think it was from a migraine medicine that I was taking. Um, they were unable to open it, so I do have a, a certain degree of heart damage. Okay, so take us back, if you could, uh, with your uh, story. Maybe we could help someone at home. Okay, uh, I did pretty much have some classic signs. I had had some pressure in the chest just one day, um, pain between my shoulder blades and down my arm. I did ignore it that day. Being a cardiac nurse, I knew that I didn't have any risk factors. I just found it hard to believe that it had anything to do with my heart. A couple days later, I had a burning feeling in my chest, and it wouldn't go away. And so I had my husband, we were out of town, so we had to find an out-of-town hospital to go to, which was a little scary. But my husband took me to the hospital, and um, they, in fact, diagnosed me with a heart attack. When I, you look at your story, I'm going to stop you there for a second, N knowing that you're a cardiac nurse, mm -hmm. knowing the symptoms that you could be going through, right. and, and yet still you sit and you think, is this happening to me? Right. right. And I would be I totally the same way. I think a lot of people out there would be the same way. Yes. You're in denial, you're in shock, right. but again, you had the experience to say, you know, this is real and this is right. something that I have to in attend the, to. In the back of my mind, I had seen women come through cardiac rehab that had had heart attacks and had no risk factors. So I knew that they were out there. So I think that's what kind of finally convinced me that um, I better get it checked out. Okay, so your, your husband takes you to the hospital and take us from there. What happened then? Um, the first thing they do when you get to the hospital is an EKG. Um, that sometimes doesn't show anything. Mine was a little abnormal. When they took me to the emergency room, they started doing blood work because there are s some blood tests that start to show heart damage. And they did two consecutive tests, and when that number was rising, they took me to the cath lab. And they tried to open up that artery. My coronary arteries were clear, so I didn't have plaques or blockages. Mm -hmm. I just had that spasm. Um, they injected nitroglycerin into there, which is supposed to open arteries. That did not work either. So I'm 
they gave me medications and um, was in the hospital a couple days, came home, went through cardiac rehab. So I kind of laugh and say that somebody wanted to see me on the other side of the desk. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you uh, took the necessary steps that you needed to do uh, when you had your signs of heart attack. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the Sam LaSan Show here on SSPTV and SSPTV.com. Our guests are with Lehigh Valley Health Network. We have Melissa Curdo and Joan Corelli, and we're talking about the signs and symptoms of heart disease and uh, we're really trying to educate you on avoiding a heart attack, if at all possible. Uh, again, we'll be right back. When we come back, we'll talk about the tests that Lehigh Valley ne Health Network does here in the greater Hazleton area. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing heart disease and avoiding a heart attack. We are with our guests who are from the Lehigh Valley Health Network and Melissa and Joan, thanks for joining us here on the Sam LaSanne Show. Thank you. Obviously I'm not Sam, I'm Janine, but I'm filling in for him today and uh, really I'm getting a good lesson on heart disease and heart attack. Uh, before the break we, we spoke, Joan, of what you went through when you had your heart attack. You mentioned some testing like EKG. For, for people out there who don't know the terminology in healthcare, uh, Melissa, talk about what kind of tests you do both at the Wellness Center and the Lehigh um, Valley Hospital. Sure. So um, at, at the Health and Wellness Center, we can do EKGs, which is your basic heart um, rhythm, gives okay. you a basic heart rhythm. Um, as Joan was saying, it can show some abnormalities, though, if there's something going on. We could do echocardiograms. It's actually an ultrasound of the heart. It gives more um, pictures of the valves and the heart muscle. There, we can do stress tests, which um, some, you could walk on a treadmill and you'll see if there's exertional changes. Like Joan was saying, men mostly feel with exertion. They'll feel the pain. So it's a lot of, we could see on the EKG if there's changes, plus also you, the patient will sometimes say, okay, I'm getting too tired now, or they start having pain. And then we could do a nuclear stress test, which also does um, it shows it's injectable. Give me a little bit more information on that. A nuclear stress test, you get pictures. Um, uh, an, an isotope is injected that concentrates in the heart muscle. So they compare a resting and a stress image to see if one side is darker than the other. It means that part of the heart didn't get a blood supply with exercise. All right, so there are many tests that you yes. can do. Uh, is there anything you can do for someone who has had a heart attack like Joan did? So, um, well, so she went through the, so what, if those tests were abnormal, mm -hmm. so then they ended up taking her to the cath lab, the cardiac, uh, cardiac catheterization. Okay. So, um, and then they can actually put a, a, um, a wire up in and, and you can see the, if there's blockages or not. Um, we do those down at, in Allentown at um, the Cedar Crest campus of the Lehigh Valley Health Network. Um, but those first ones I was talking about were more of your indicative ones. So when you're, um, so then they could, they're a little bit more your basic tests and they could do more comprehensive ones down there. After you've had a heart attack though, one of the big things that we like to get people into is cardiac rehab. Mm -hmm. As Joan mentioned, um, she was in that. There's four phases of cardiac rehab. Phase one is usually in the hospital, mm -hmm. um, just getting the patient up, moving a lot of education about now it's healthy eating, um, looking out for those signs and symptoms. Again, medications, because patients, a lot of patients are put on new medications as well. Um, and then just how to start the activity up again. Uh, we have phase two then at the Health and Wellness Center, which is, it's a supervised exercise program um, in our cardiac diagnostic area run by nurses and exercise physiologists that they're monitoring the patient while they're exercising. Because sometimes patients do get a little nervous with the same kind of feelings, that shortness of breath when you're exercising might be the same kind of feeling you were feeling before the heart attack. Um, so, and it's really, it's a good social support as well too, because everybody that's in there has been through some kind of heart um, if disease effect or um, event. So, and then three and four are more of just a, a little independent fitness program, just keeping people healthy as well. Okay, so the rat rehab is really gradual over these phases, and yes. you have someone with you uh, throughout the entire phase. Exactly. All phases. All phases, right. Okay, and during the break, we were saying, I was saying, you know, I was in a car accident uh, years ago, and I do get pain down my arm, so you really need to distinguish between those aches and pains and, uh, you know, this, the actual signs of having a heart attack. These tests that you're talking about, um, 
are ways that you can see if someone really is having signs of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, once they're in the exercise program, then we're also monitoring them on the same EKGs. So um, you, we were talking a little bit about, yeah, muscle symptoms mm -hmm. versus heart symptoms. Joan, talk about that a little bit. Yeah, well, I think when, when you're having a heart attack and you're having a heart attack symptom, I think you kind of know that something's different. Mm -hmm. We all have aches and pains on a daily basis. Um, arthritis pain, muscle pain, and if, if that discomfort is happening when you're moving, then you know that it's coming from your joints and your muscles. When you have angina, like we talked about, or you're having a heart attack, that pain just kind of stays there no matter which way you move, no matter what you do. Okay, so again, uh, we talked about the symptoms, we talked about how can, you can avoid having a heart yes. attack. 80% of people can avoid it. But 20%, and Joan was in that 20%, uh, you know, you could be the healthiest person and still have a heart attack, but they are, there is definitely good treatment here at home through the Lehigh Valley Health Network. And uh, in closing, girls, we have about a minute left. If, is there anything else you wanted to add to the program? Um, I think just our takeaway points, if you're, if you're feeling signs, symptoms, call 911, okay. get to the hospital. Um, we do have, a, within the Lehigh Valley Health Network, we have a full range of comprehensive care for cardiac care. Um, we have a, that's probably one of our strongest care, stroke and, and cardiac care. So a uh, few people can feel comfortable being in this area and we're gonna take good care of you. Okay, John? Yeah, the same thing. I think we have really good doctors. Um, we have a wealth of knowledge in the wellness center, people that have been there for many years doing testing and doing cardiac rehab. I think it's a wonderful program. Yes, we have great doctors and I'm not being paid to say that. We do have great doctors <laughs> here right at home and I want to thank you both for coming on the program. It was a joy to fill in for Mr. Lasant, but I do have to give you one little gift on behalf of the best show on TV, <laughs> the girls. As you can see, these are really nice mugs. Thank so thank you, you so much on behalf yeah, of uh, my father and my entire family for coming on the program. If yeah. you have any questions or want to make a, uh, you know, a, a call uh, or need any more information, schedule an appointment, you can through the Lehigh Valley Network. The website is up on your screen. If you need to get a hold of Sam, it's Sam at SSPTV. Com. You're watching The Sam LaSanne Show, and we'll see you next time.